So there's obviously a lot of talk right now about ACTA and SOPA and all of the attempts to um, enforce IP on the internet, which are, um, if they pass as they are now, going to lead to a draconian kind of system where websites can get shut down willy-nilly. Um, and that's very, very important because those are indeed big dangers uh, to the health of the internet. But there's another issue that doesn't really get talked about as much, and that's the fact that <clears throat> how the business models of a lot of companies, especially since the move online, have worked. And the stuff is usually hidden in the agreements that you click on when you use software, say. It's that you don't buy software, you license it. Um, so you're basically renting it off the provider. Um, and they can basically withdraw your right to use it as put forth in a license agreement which usually comes out to they can withdraw it almost whenever they feel like um, and of course that doesn't only go for software it even goes for physical devices which are provided often by um, companies that have a very powerful grip on whatever happens with them like Apple um, they can brick your iPhone remotely uh, make it non-usable um, and then that's it uh, and um, that's that's a very kind of worrying trend, and it started with um, well, I guess it probably ma mainly started with computers with software, um, but it's increasingly going into more and more areas. Uh, as especially as the internet gets prominence, these companies can actually enforce that control a lot better. Um, so if you need to be online to access features of the software you're using, uh, they can enforce the the cancellation of your license in various ways uh, and in the future uh, there is this talk of moving to thin clients which essentially means your computer would just have the hardware in it um, to basically power up and the screen and your hard drive would be uh, the internet and your operating system would be provided by some corporation that would also be on the internet so your computer itself would be useless um, and presumably that would operate under similar kind of licensing restrictions so um, that would mean that the provider uh, that's providing your computer uh, could withdraw your right to use it um, and that would of course then also include your files which you've stored online and if you look at the model of uh, various uh, online things like Facebook they also um, in their uh, licensing agreements they have rights to the things that you post on their sites. Now, if you move that onward and think of thin clients where all the information is stored online, these companies will presumably, in a similar license agreement, um, take some partial ownership of your files. Um, and it's really, it's a big change. It's a change that no one talks about because it happened incrementally. It's in these big licensing agreement that no one reads. Um, but what it means is that in effect, we're moving from an ownership society uh, to a renting society, a society of uh, people who rent and rent here's. Uh, and that's really a very worrying trend. And it shouldn't only be a worrying trend for people who don't really like the idea of property like me. It should also be a very worrying trend to people who love the idea of property and think that freedom is based on it because property is essentially fading. And the point of this whole thing is that you won't have any property. You will just have, um, you will just have these conditional licenses. You're basically renting everything. Um, and when you look at the companies that are doing it, I think the term is monopoly. So they're not monopolies, but there's only a couple of players because it requires usually a very big development effort. And they maintain very tight control of their product. So you don't really have much choice. And since there's so few players, uh, they can coordinate without having to talk to one another. It happens all by itself uh, to actually make sure that various things that they don't want don't happen and so when you look at these kind of products a lot of times there might be a simple little thing that you want to have done but you can't do it because you can't access the software you can't modify it even if it's a relatively simple change um, 
because they won't let you. Uh, try doing anything with the Windows code or the, anything that Apple puts out uh, that's not under an open source license and you'll find out you can't. So then they can charge large amounts of money for some simple to implement functionality. Uh, and that's getting more and more common. If you look at uh, games, more and more being sold by Steam, which has the same licensing agreement. You don't own the things you buy on Steam. You own a license to them. Uh, and they can, of course, withdraw your uh, entire account. They can cancel or they can withdraw selectively. But also the game companies increasingly are more and more interested in not letting users develop their own content um, or at least limiting that to certain areas of the game so they can sell downloadable content. And they will then stop you from being able to produce this content for yourself to mod the game. And now in the past that wasn't so much of a problem even if the company didn't want it people would hack it and they would give you the tools to do it. Nowadays if you hack it offline then you won't be able to um, use that online anymore because that needs to be verified uh, through the Steam uh, system. And so we're moving to a to a world that is going to be uh, closed to the regular user in a way that it wasn't before because as it was before yes there were some things we licensed and then there were some things we owned and with what we owned we could essentially do what we wanted uh, but the things that we own online are becoming less and less and more and more frequently we're simply renting and basically at the mercy of these gigantic um, content providers and there's a lot of um, there's a lot of rationalization going on there and the big players are getting bigger and gobbling up the smaller players and it's happening pretty much in every facet of um, of the the computer software world and if you look at the world and you look at how important these things are how important computers are to us today it's only going to get bigger and the control if we leave it up to these companies is only going to get stronger and market forces won't help us because there's only a couple of these companies. You can't really <laughs> effectively start up uh, a rival very easily at all. And when you look at free rivals, say, to Microsoft uh, Windows and to uh, Apple like Linux, then one of the big problems you have is that the big hardware providers, for example, they know there's not that much of a market. Um, the games providers know there's not much of a market so they're not going to make a compatible version for Linux um, and also there isn't that lobbying power from Apple and Microsoft so if you as a user individually decide well I've had enough I'll switch to Linux you'll find that you don't have the things you need so you'll go back to your old operating system um, and so Every single user by themselves, if they switch, they'd be the sucker, which prevents um, a change from happening. And it stops uh, alternatives from developing effectively. Now, of course, there are these counterbalancing things which have great future. The Internet itself, as this medium for transmitting information, is part of that. Open source software is part of that. But all of these companies are trying as hard as they can and are very interested in restricting that to some areas perhaps of their product where people can do that and have this sense of freedom. But core functionality to actually constrain it tighter and tighter so that they can keep the grip on their consumers. Um, and as that happens, imagine if you're in using this new thin client online operating system uh, if you try switching from Facebook to uh, Google Plus, say, there's no easy way to transfer your data. Um, and that's intentional. They don't want you to switch. Now, if you have everything physically on your hard drive, you can do certain things. But imagine if you have this online operating system. Um, then they're probably going to try to make it harder as well there for you to switch. Uh, or put various kind of difficulties in your way. And really since the market isn't going to work very well in my eyes because there's not enough competition um, one of the big threats one of the big guns that we have available is always government and legislation and regulation uh, so if we choose to uh, basically uh, uh, cripple government and remove its capacity to regulate these things then we're going to live I think 
increasingly in a society of renters and we're going to rent our entire life our social interactions which are going to happen increasingly online uh, our work related things which are going to rely on software our entire lives we're going to rent from gigantic mega corporations and I think that's in many ways as worrying as the trends to uh, the, the attempts to actually um, kind of be able to selectively shut down parts of the internet but in the end of course there are two things that these big corporations are going to try to do in concert. They're going to try to kind of close the pincer, um, have this way of eliminating small rivals using SOPA and PIPA and things like that, or making it very difficult, and then also of controlling you entirely through these new systems, which you don't really have any rights to. And if you challenge them legally, they're going to have a thousand lawyers um, that basically can tie you up in court forever or just crush you um, and I mean the last thing I want to say is I don't think this is you know this is not a conspiracy it's not like they're scheming somehow behind closed doors all meeting up trying to do this no it's just the natural thing they're already doing it because it's profitable it's the more they do it the more profitable it gets the more control the more power they wield uh, the more they can exploit that um, and so that's the natural kind of tendency of the current system that we have, uh, which tends towards monopoly in these areas where we re where they require this immense amount of development effort. And so it's the natural kind of progression if we don't challenge and stop it by intervening and saying, no, we shouldn't be going in this direction for things to keep changing that way. Um, and, you know, I guess there's a race between who gets there first? Will corporations manage to get there and then close all of the escape avenues? Or will we get there and provide open source alternatives and ways where people have real alter alternatives and take away that power uh, and keep it open sourced?